Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gade. Welcome to today. It is an amazing day. You're going to love this broadcast. God, he is just encouraging people this week because so many people are going through it. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. Amen. And so we're going to get into the black sheep of the family. Okay. For those of y'all who have never heard that term, black sheep of the family basically means the troublemaker. But oh my goodness, you're going to see it in a new light that is absolutely going to bless you. Hey, thank you for joining in. I see uh, Louisa, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. And so yesterday I was trying, putting up my winter jackets. Oh, it is that time. Put your winter jackets up and get ready for spring. Hey, Ashley, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. And so as I was putting my winter jackets up, I just gave a try for one of the leather jackets that I have. And hey, Deborah, God bless you. Today is called Black Sheep of the Family and y'all gonna love this because I'm gonna get into the prophet Elijah. <laughs> oh my goodness, there's such an attack of the enemy that will try to make you feel like the black sheep of the family. For those of y'all who've never heard that term, hey, Diana. Diana, God says this is really for you. For those of y'all who have never heard that term, it basically means the troublemaker, okay? But we're gonna see, hey, Tracy, God bless you. Hey, Sherry, hey, friend, love you. So awesome to have you on here, lady. And so the black sheep of the family is a term that means troublemaker, but that is the lie of the enemy. In Jesus name and so yesterday as I was putting up my winter jackets I tried on one of my shorter leather jackets hey Janice and it it's leather and so I really didn't know what kind of leather it was and it's a beautiful black jacket and so I looked on the inside to see what kind of leather is this I've never felt this kind of leather before and it turns out that it's lambskin leather and I was like Oh my goodness, this is like the softest leather I've ever felt. And oh my goodness, it was just absolutely amazing what Holy Spirit spoke to my heart then. And the Lord was saying, Robin, the black sheep of the family is a sheep. In other words, there is no black sheep. That is the lie of the pit of hell, <laughs> amen. And we have to be mindful because unconsciously, due to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, hey Kathy, Hey, good to see you. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil makes us feel like we're either good or bad, good or evil. And there's that bipolar relationship in our members. And so areas where we're working out our salvation and fear and trembling, Ephesians 2, 12, we have that feeling of I'm either good when people accept me and they approve of me, or I'm bad when people reject me or they say something negative to me. And so that is what we're dealing with, that spiritual dis-ease as God causes us to be pruned, John 15, 2, in our members so that that is removed from us and we bear more abundant fruit. And so yesterday, as I was putting up my jackets and I saw that black lambskin one, you know, I just felt the Lord say, Robin, there is no black sheep of the family. And the Lord showed me how there is such a lying spirit. Let me tell you what. I feel things that people are going through, okay? And oh my goodness, I was just feeling it this morning as I woke up and the Lord told me that there was this lying spirit that was trying to bring discouragement, despair, disappointment, where people thought that God was not for them, where people just thought that they were the black sheep of the family, so to speak, the bad one. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. And oh my goodness, and I'll just be transparent. Y'all know that I'm real, real. And I love to be real with y'all so y'all can just see. I am not a superhero saint. I am just a servant of the Lord working out her salvation and fear and trembling. And so there have been times in my life when this spirit attacks me and it will just get me to think, oh my goodness, the only reason we're being blessed is because of rich. And it pulls you into a pity party and you feel pitiful for yourself. 
and it has you focused on you and how pitiful you are, okay? And we're going to see the prophet Elijah in 1 Kings 19 and how he went through this exact thing. Listen, if you don't think that you will ever go through this, don't ever say never. Because if the prophet Elijah went through it at 1 Kings 19, let me tell you what. We all are going to go through it on this earth. It is just part of being human and part of being a Christian. Amen. And so times when I've had that pitiful thing, like I'll get into with Elijah in a minute, I would just, the enemy would just cause me to have discouragement and despair and disappointment and just to accept, okay, Robin, just accept that the only reason that you're being blessed is because of rich, your husband and you're you're just going to be lucky if you even make it into heaven and i'm just being transparent with you so some of y'all who are out there that might be feeling the same thing that you can be encouraged amen and the tactics of the enemy will be exposed so you will not stay under this attack and you will be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove amen and so when those seasons would happen when those times would happen i would just get in this pity party and I would just have all these negative thoughts that I would listen to and not, and I wouldn't be taking my thoughts captive. And I would just be in a rain of those thoughts that would assail my mind. And I would just be in this pity party, okay? And the Holy Spirit would just really shake me and say, Robin, it is a lying spirit. Resist it. It is not true, okay? And so I would raise up like Isaiah 62, I mean Isaiah 52, and loose myself from those chains and sit in the dignified place of being a royal priesthood of the holy nation. There's a truck coming by, it's being loud. Hold on one second. Thank you, Lord. It's a unified truck. God's going to unify us to his word. Amen. It's a big 18-wheeler. So at any rate, when God would bring me a wake-up call, unify, better food, better future. Yeah, when we're unified with God, we're going to get the better food, the meat of the word, and we're going to see our future. We're going to have a better future. Jeremiah 29, 11, 13. Y'all, I cannot make this up. This is totally God. Oh, unfi, un unify. We're going to have better food and a better future. You got to unify with the word of truth and you eat better food and have a better future. And you don't realize that when you're in a pity party, you're just, I mean, you might as well be eating cockroaches. Okay. I don't know about you, but I would rather eat locusts like John the Baptist. I don't want no cockroaches, but that's what's happening when you're in a pity party. You don't see that you just are eating the meal of despair and discouragement that the enemy has sold you. You're in his grocery store and you've bought his lie and you are just at the, the enemy's table eating his food, which will cause you to not see the future that God has for you. You got to get away from that table and you've got to get to the word of the truth that says greater is Jesus Christ in you than he that is in this world. That says God has a hope for you. He has a future for you. <clears throat> and that's ultimately what the enemy is after. He's after your hope of your future. He's after the word of God in you. He is after the fruits of righteousness that you are producing. He doesn't want you to produce those fruits because they glorify the Father, John 15, 8. So watch this, this is so powerful. And so God told me last night, yesterday, he said, Robin, there are no black sheep of the family. Sheep are just sheep, okay? Christians are just Christians. There is no true bad Christian. Your own dis-ease of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil will cause you to project onto other people that they're either good or bad. Listen, only God is good. Christ, Holy Spirit in us are good and Satan is bad. And so you've got to get that out of your vocabulary. I'm good. I'm bad. I'm good. I'm bad. They're good. They're bad. They're good. They're bad. They're not acting right. 
In other words, you're saying they're bad. You've got to stop seeing people like black sheep. Sheep are sheep. And when instead you see them through the eyes of God, you see his heart for them, you have his prayers, and you see their trauma, and you don't judge them, but you have a prayer of God's truth, prayers of righteousness that avail tremendous power. So now this is where we're gonna end as I use, amen, Sherry, hey, Amy. So this is where we're gonna end is, oh, and I'm by Greenbrier, which is one of the most awesome all older homes, assisted living, nursing home, independent living, a triage facility. We live by it. And I think about some people are in the briar patch, the thorns of the enemy. Micah 7 says that. Micah 7 said, all those of Israel are briars around me. In other words, their words are saying, I'm bad, I'm bad, I'm bad, I'm bad. And so let's look at 1 Kings 19, and this is where we end. The prophet Elijah already, after 1 Kings 17, 1 Kings 18, saw oil multiply in a widow's jar, saw the heavens shut up, prayed that no rain would come, and then later prayed for rain, and saw the outpouring of rain, called fire down on God's altar as he repaired the altar of the Lord, 1 Kings 18, and Ahab sent men, and Ahab was basically saying, Oh, Elijah, are you the one that brings trouble to Israel? In other words, Elijah, you're the troublemaker. You're the black sheep. Oh, let me tell you what. See, everybody thinks that it was only Jezebel's message that sent him running. Let me tell you what, there was a message before Jezebel, and it was Ahab's message, and Ahab and Jezebel go in tandem. Jezebel says, I'm going to make you just like these men whom you've slayed, Elijah. Ahab says, you're bad, 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 troublemaker, black sheep. No! So Elijah, who saw the most power of God in his time, he ends up running Woo, just leaving his servant, having a dad mash, so depressed, discouraged, in a pity party, in despair. And he said, I am no better than my forefathers. In other words, I am mortal. I am a man. See, when you don't realize, when you've had the power of God, you've seen the power of God, you forget your frailty. And let me tell you what, God's going to let you know your frailty. As at times when the lying serpent attacks, the lying spirits, they say, you're bad and you're going to die. You're bad and you're going to die. Let me tell you what, you resist the devil. And like Elijah, when he had a wake-up call and he wanted to die, he was in such a pity party that he wanted to die. Read First Kings 19. So God has an angel feed him, and God has him fed supernaturally, and then God sends him to Mount Horeb, okay? So he goes to Mount Horeb, and then he comes out to the front of the cave. He's at that space of a new encounter of what? the still small voice of God. So many times we're looking for signs. We're looking for a neon sign. We're looking for a massive confirmation. When just like Elijah, God sent a wind. He wasn't in the wind. God sent a fire. He wasn't in the fire. God sent an earthquake and he wasn't in the earthquake. Then God sent a still small voice and Elijah got his mantle and covered him, his face because he was humbled and brought to remembrance of the still small voice of God. And when God got him out of that pity party, the prophet was fired up and he anointed three others. And one of them was Jehu. Oh my goodness. Let me tell you what, what you think is going to take you down 
is a, only a step into the call. So right now, saints, they are lying spirits attacking God's people. They are trying to get people to think that God is not going to come through for you, that you are worthless, that you are a black sheep. Let me tell you what, that is something that you need to take captive. You need to put under your feet. Sheep are sheep. It doesn't matter what color they are. Sheep are sheep. Don't start identifying that you're the black sheep. No, you're not. You're not the troublemaker. You're the one that's being humbled. You're the one that's being prepared for God's greatness. Amen. So encourage one another, pray for each other, and get ready for the power of God to show up. And look for the still small voice of God. In Jesus' name, God bless you. I love you, and I'll see you tomorrow.